everyone welcome back to the channel today it's semi kind of nice out but i still don't have a helmet so still no riding but i'm gonna do a little bit of an upgrade i already did the front tire and that is how to do the white letters so i'm gonna show you guys how to do that without buying the tires and the reason why you do that i mean i don't even know i couldn't find any tires that actually had it done i know cars do and when you get the white letters on the tires for like my truck i have them on my truck uh, it's actually like a couple hundred dollars more so i don't know about street bikes i couldn't find them with the tires but uh, and I really don't know how anybody else does it, but I have been doing this on probably pretty much every one of my like race type cars since I was 18 years old. Uh, way back in the day, I had a Honda Civic. If I can find a picture of it, I'll post it here. And it had a camouflage paint job that I did with spray paint cans. And I was a painter of a body shop, but I just was like, I'm gonna spray paint my car camo just to see if I could do it. And it looked awesome. And I did the yellow, white uh, i did the yellow um features around the tires in yellow marker and it held up forever i mean it just this stuff wouldn't come off so i've been doing it for a really long time it's always worked there's my front tire that i've done so far and you know this is going to basically require a little bit of a pa uh, patience uh, it's really super easy to do just grab a paint marker any paint marker will do really um, you know, it doesn't really man matter the brand. I got this at Shields. Uh, so local hardware stores have these or like uh, arts and craft stores. You're gonna do about three coats. And if you do decide to do yellow, you wanna do white first. Just a heads up on that. Always coat it first in white, just one coat. It'll just make that yellow, it'll be a lot easier and you won't have to coat it so many times. Uh, but you will have to let it dry for about two hours or so before you go ahead and put that yellow one there um so it requires a little bit of a uh, patience uh, a little bit of a steady hand it's not too difficult to do as you can see i've already done this one that's one coat on there and if you don't let it dry long enough on there you'll actually just start you know working in reverse and start peeling and you know causing the paint to spread and all kinds of stuff so you want to let it dry really nicely before you apply your next coats and uh, so that's really important to do that. Um, also, um, what else? It's, you know, you just kind of stay in the lines. It's really easy to do. It's so simple. And the reason why you do this is because it just gives the bike a little bit of character, a little bit of pop. And I think it looks sick. Look, look at that front tire. And I'll show you guys uh, what it looks like when it's finished. We'll go ahead and do the back tire. That's all I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm not gonna do all four tires. I mean, you guys can pretty much figure it out from that. I actually probably didn't have to show you anything. Just basically grab a marker and paint the letters. I mean, it's really that easy. Uh, so, and it looks awesome when it's done. And that's why you do it. Give it a little bit of uniqueness towards me. I know other people do it. I haven't seen it out here. I don't know if a lot of people know you could do this, but this is how I always have done it. And let me know in the comments if that's how you do it, if you have white walls or your friend has them or whoever. And uh, if there's a better way, I'd be interested to know what that is because I don't know what it is. I mean, of course, I guess you could buy the tires, but we're gonna just paint them. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. And we'll do the back tire. So I guess I'm gonna twist the bike around. And I, one thing I wanna learn how to do, and I'm obviously not gonna do this on camera because I don't know how, is to spin the bike on the kickstand. I've never learned how to do that. And it's one thing I've never learned to do. And I'm gonna practice that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna master it. And then I will teach you guys that. So and in case you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically you lean the bike towards that way and you basically just spin the whole bike around on the kickstand. And it's an easy way to turn the bike around. And, uh, but it takes a little bit of skill and I would probably practice that a few times before doing it in front of people or on camera. So, um, Anyway, let me get the bike turned around and we will go ahead and uh, do the back tire. All right, so you'll want to position the bike obviously in a position to where you can get to the letters easily. Uh, the back tire is a little bit more difficult, especially on the side where the chain is and everything. Uh, but get yourself a little piece of cardboard so you can get the uh, brush of the marker nice and wet. Make sure you shake this up real good. And then you're just basically 
going right over the lines and it'll have like a bump in it so it's kind of easy to trace it's like you really can't mess it up it's like almost impossible let me get a little bit closer it's you know and then you're just in the inside parts you're just going to fill that in just kind of dab it and uh fill it in the marker let the marker do all the work don't try to push and oh one thing you definitely don't want to do is push in like all the way because then you'll end up just dripping marker all over your tire and then uh you'll have to get solvent and everything else so you're just gonna dab lightly on that first coat and this side's a little bit more difficult to do because the chain guards in a way but you don't have to worry about that fine detail in the first coat you're just kind of filling it in right now and getting it started and then you will go over the rest of it as you go as you can see like i'm not pushing down on the marker because if you do that you will obviously run run the paint everywhere so don't push down on the marker and uh, if you guys have cars, you could do this on your cars too if you want. Kind of applies to everything. And I don't know if one type of marker lasts longer than another, to be honest with you. I mean, paint marker is a paint marker. Um, now, like, if it gets all a little bit on the edge, I wouldn't really worry about that. Like, you know, unless somebody gets on it with a magnifying glass, you're not really going to be able to tell. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that too too much and uh, a lot of times like a lot of the stuff on the outside of the letters will just come right off with your nail after it dries you can just kind of scrape it off with your uh, use like a piece of plastic or something sh sharp not like a knife obviously you could use a razor blade I guess uh, but be really careful and you can just scrape the edges. Um, or you can like put a piece of plastic around a rag or a paper towel with some solvent on the edge and just wipe uh, the edges. Um, and that'll, that'll come off. And you can see I'm not going over the edges just yet. I'm just kind of putting that first initial coat on there. Not going too crazy. That's kind of, that's it really for that part of it um i like to do the arrows like you could do all the letters and all that stuff i'm not going too crazy with it like that i'm just going to do the sport max part the number size of the tire and the directional arrows and that'll be uh it for me i'm not even going to do these little letters here it's just uh, a little bit too much so you don't want to go overboard like you know doing like the tubeless radial and all that stuff that kind of looks cheesy uh so just a little subtle this to it and it looks really good when you do that so let me uh move the bike more so i can get this part of it i'm gonna try to get it here because it actually might be a little easier to do it down there now obviously this side of the bike unless you have a bike stand which i don't have yet but if you do have one of those like a pitbull or a woodcraft uh, bike stand that goes on the spools here if you have those uh use that because then the bike doesn't lean one way or the other well it only leans one way but uh, that way it's just a lot easier this side's actually going to be a lot more difficult because the bike's leaning towards this way and you're kind of in an awkward position now for me i guess because i'm an artist uh this may be a little bit easier for me so those of you who aren't like artistically able to do something like this, maybe just find a friend who is, or, you know, maybe you're, uh, you're if you have a girlfriend, girl, girls tend to be a little more steadily handed than men naturally. I know that's hard for some of us to admit, but that's actually true. Um, they just got softer hands, you know what I mean? So uh, maybe your girlfriend will be able to do it because they paint their nails and stuff all the time. So think of it something like that you know what i mean uh so just get your girlfriend to do it tell her to take her out for a nice dinner or get her something nice if she paints your bike letter tires for you 
you know? Uh, or find a buddy or somebody who's an artist where you can pay a body shop to do it. Um, you know, these are do-it-yourself things, so, you know, paying people to do it's kind of stupid, in my opinion, but to each is their own. Um, but, hey, some guys might find this just dumb anyway. You know, it's not a race bike, bro. Um, actually, actually, it's a, that's exactly what it is. But, uh, you know. Some guys think that just because it's not a 600 or a 1000 that it's slow and it's a beginner bike. And uh, we're gonna talk about that in other videos because um, let me tell you right now that this bike is the farthest thing from slow. And uh, it's arguably, you can, you can make the argument for this not being a beginner bike. It's a little powerful for, for a beginner, but um, oh, make sure, you know, this is a brand new bike, so. Uh, make sure you don't have hand, pain all over you or touching it, because uh, that would be catastrophic. Now this could be, uh, some of these areas could be difficult, like the arrow here. I like to just trace the outside of it. You guys see what I'm doing? Okay. Trace the outside of it and just put like a real quick coat, go towards the tip of the arrow, like that. Kind of fill in the back tail here. This, these are hard to do a little bit, uh, but do not try to get it covered in one coat, especially if you're doing yellow. Um, you won't get it done in one coat in yellow. You're gonna have to put like four coats. And as I said in the beginning of the video, you're gonna wanna put white down first anyway. Just makes it way, way easier. So, we'll do these letters down here now. Can you guys see what I'm doing? These ones are difficult too because they're just kind of like. Oh, let me get closer for you guys actually. Let's see what I'm doing here. And yeah, you're kind of going upside down, but basically what you're doing is just filling in. You're filling in the letter really. And uh, you really want to take your time because if you have a big run off of the letter, it's going to look like shit. Then it starts to look like some guy was in his garage painting his tires with a marker. And uh, that is what you want to avoid. So take your time and don't rush it. And it will definitely look good. Nobody's gonna be able to tell the difference, believe me. I've had so many people ask me on like, um, cars that I've had, like, where'd you get those tires? <laughs> I can't find race tires. <laughs> yeah. Amazon. Actually, Amazon probably does have them. You see how I'm having trouble getting in to the top part of the R? So, that's where it can get a little bit tricky, but you just kind of dab it in there a little bit and then spread it and don't let it run in there off of the letter I mean and if you do this on a warmer day it's a lot easier in case you uh, probably didn't already guess that because the paint it'll be easier in between coats but like I said this is not something you can rush you really gotta take your time doing this because it'll look like crap. And actually this R doesn't look great, but like I said, this, you can get a rag afterwards and touch that stuff up. Uh, if you have a paint brush, um, that can work well too. And you can go over some of the really fine details. You can also cut this. I've seen guys cut, or you can like slit the edge of it after you're done. And then you can uh, really get in some of those hard to reach areas. We're gonna let that dry up for a little bit because too much paint's getting built up in there. Take your time on the second coat. Don't rush it. Usually what I'll do is I'll put on some music and hang out. 
So I'm just kind of probably going to show you this last uh, bit here. And then that's probably going to be it. I'm going to listen to music and finish it up. Um, Cause it just makes it a little bit better, easier to do when you're jamming and just kind of chilling out. But I will, go, I will continue the video when I'm finished and show you guys the, uh, the finished product. But I think you guys get the idea here. I don't need to make a whole video on, you know, this entire process. Um, right when I'm about finished, I will continue on to the video. And, you know, just remember, it's, it's something you can uh, do over time as well. So like, you know, you could do this first coat and let it sit for a day and go back and do the rest. Uh, you don't have to get it all done in one shot. It is a tedious process. Believe me, it's, you know, I'm probably making it a little bit more easier than it is because I have done it a, a, a lot. Uh, you know, I've done it on friends' cars and bikes. Um, I've done it on pretty much on all of my own cars that I've owned that were, you know, raced out and stuff and uh, body kits and all that and all that stuff it was popular back in the day. Uh, this one down here, like you, you'll be able to see, like it's a little, we'll have to touch that stuff up later, but that's, you get the uh, general idea here. You know, you're, you're basically just filling in the letters with white paint and then uh, you just keep going over it until it meets your satisfaction. Again, if you're doing any color other than white, you want to do white first on your first coat, let it sit until it's dry, not tacky, I mean completely dry, and then go over it with whatever color you choose, red, yellow, blue, I don't know why you do any of those, but yellow and white's usually uh, the two. You can do red, I think red would probably look okay. But in any case, that's what I got for you guys, and I'll see you when I'm finished. I'm going to jam out and finish this up. Alright guys, so I'm all finished. That's what it looks like. After you get all of your letters done, it gives it a little bit of pop. Looks way better than the factory, I think. And it flows with the bike a lot better too. So, and if you don't like it, you can always just get some brake cleaner or solvent or something like that and it'll wipe right off. And that's what you're gonna do with like some of your edges or anything that ends up a little runny or anything like that. If you don't like it, you can just wipe it off with brake cleaner. Now, that's gonna take a little bit of finesse too because it'll get all over the place. So, you know, maybe do one tire, like a little spot on the tire, see if you like it. And then, then wipe it off if you don't. I wouldn't do all four and then decide, oh, this looks like crap. Another thing to keep in mind, you're not gonna keep these tires forever, you know, Especially if you're gonna track the bike. These are, these are street tires and they're not even that great of street tires anyway. So more than likely, uh, I'll be replacing the tires. So not a huge, huge deal. But uh, I think it looks way, way better with those, uh, with those white walls. Well, I don't know if you'd call them white walls with the white tires. It just looks way better and super easy to do and uh, anybody can pretty much do that. And like I said, if you're not artistic and you don't think you'd have a steady enough hand, maybe find a buddy or your girlfriend to do it for you because, you know, it looks good. So that's it. All right guys, that's about all I have time for today. Uh, you know, it's still absolutely freezing outside and it's like 30 degrees right now and I'm just out here doing what I can do, you know, before the riding season officially starts out here in Iowa. It's probably a little bit later than most places. Um, my helmet still hasn't come in yet. So, you know, obviously if that was here, I'd probably at least take her for a little ride, but I haven't even been able to, to ride it yet because I won't do that without a helmet. As I said in my last video, I ordered some riding boots last night, which should be in soon uh, from revzilla.com that I found on their, uh, like, they have like a closing sale on some stuff, so check out that part of their website if you guys want to look for some good gear on the low uh, price point. They even have some like Revit stuff, Dineasy uh, jackets for like really cheap in their closeout part of the 
part of their website. So check that out, leave a link below for Revzilla. That's pretty much where I'm gonna get everything from my bike. Uh, the only thing left that I need to get is a jacket. I have one picked out. It's just a little bit more than I wanna spend right now. So I'm gonna save up another couple of weeks for that. And uh, I'll probably ride without a jacket right now. Um, but at the very least, you need the helmet. So, uh, you know, I'm really stoked to get on this thing and start doing the vlogs. But another thing that I still need is a GoPro. The only thing I have so far is the uh, mic for the GoPro that will go into my uh, chin, uh, chin curtain in my helmet. Uh, so I have that. Uh, but I need to pick... A GoPro will probably end up with it like a Hero 5 or something a little older just to, so I can start going and not spend a ton of money on a GoPro uh, and get that attached to the helmet and then um, then we can start doing moto vlogs. So once that happens you guys will see rides and we'll start talking about uh, all that stuff and I can give you first impressions and a breakdown on how the bike is for a beginner or anything like that. But right now as it sits man this thing is just awesome. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's beautiful. Uh, and I know it's fast, you know, you can watch any amount of videos. You won't, you won't hear any YouTuber talk about this bike bad. It's just not a, it's a beautiful, beautiful machine. And, um, it's a little baby ninja, but man, this thing rips and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm definitely looking forward to sharing the experience with you guys. The journey starts now, you know, and you know, some of you guys have already been putting in the comments, like you're debating on whether to get a bike or should you, this is the one you wanted to get go for it like 100% do it if you can afford it and you can make the payments they're like a hundred bucks a month literally now you know the bike comes to like nine grand just about with all, all said and done with freight and taxes and tags I added the helmet which was 700 and, and stuff like that um, and I got an extended warranty so you know they can get you on other things too like you know the um, the extended like um, maintenance but you know obvious honestly if you're getting a motorcycle, part of the fun of that is to, you know, do the maintenance and do the oil changes and at least chain tightening at the very least, you know. Uh, so those things are all part of it, you know. If you're going to become a motorcyclist and, and do this thing, you should learn some of the basic maintenance requirements or things to, to do as, as maintenance. Now, I'm a mechanic, so it's easy for me, but it, those things are easy. I mean, change of oil on this thing's one bolt, literally, you know. So it's really simple. Um, what else did I want to mention quick before this video is over? I think I think that's about it. I'll probably think of something after I close it down. But anyways, uh, yeah. So you, you should definitely you should definitely do it. And I'm glad that I'm inspiring some of you guys to you know consider getting a motorcycle and you know get into the sport uh, or the hobby, I guess you could call it. And um, you know it, it leads to you know, you know consider like you know get out of your comfort zone and do something you haven't ever done before or even thought of. I know some of you were like, yeah, I've been thinking about it and I don't. And then, you know, this has been something I've been wanting to do for like years now. And here I am. So, um, yeah, just go ahead and pull the trigger on it. It's, uh, it'll definitely change your life for the better, you know? And like I said, I haven't got to ride yet, but I know that it's going to be awesome, especially coming up on that one year deal where bad bad things happened this time last year so uh it'll be nice to clear my head you know and yeah so that's what i got for you guys i will definitely you know glad to hear from you and uh, put in the comments and all that stuff you know you know you guys know the deal comment like share subscribe all that good stuff i'll see you next one peace